God is so good. God is so good. Thank you that your goodness, Father, chased us. Thank you. When we were not smart enough to chase after you, your goodness chased after us. I thank you, Father. Father, I thank you that everyone here, I I just in my heart that everyone here has a moment of remembrance. I just pray that everyone has a moment of remembrance. That's a great message that you could share with us, Father. A moment of remembrance. A moment of remembrance. A moment of remembrance. I thank you, Father. May we never forget. 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 You know, even Jesus talked like that. There was a rich man that was foolish. There's a poor man named Lazarus. One, they both died. One, the poor man, Lazarus, went to Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and went to hell. And it says, remember when? Remember when? Yes, remember when? I'm telling you, may we all have a time of remembrance. May we all have a time of remembrance what God has brought us through. Amen. Glory to God. Let's say it together. God is good. good. And his mercy mercy. endures forever. Amen. Thank you, worship team. A wonderful job tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Glory, 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 glory. I'm so thankful for my Lord. I'm so thankful. So thankful. I'm thankful for all of you. I'm thankful that God led you to Covenant of Peace Church, First Full Gospel Temple, and then some of you to Covenant of Peace after it already changed. I thank God for all you've been faithful that's been here from the beginning. That uh, you never quit. I thank God for his faithfulness and uh, for everything that goes with it. Amen. And um, well, uh, today or uh, was it this morning? This morning, uh, the Lord really was uh, impressing on Angel to say something. Now, for her to be impressed to say something, uh, not just spontaneous, you know, where she comes up and says, I got something. Uh, I know it's, uh, it's a good thing because sometimes I beg her to say things and she won't. I'll say it when I feel like, well, and uh, she, uh, she could have done this this morning. Uh, but, uh, we said, we'll just wait till this evening. So, uh, come on. And then, uh, I don't think I was as nervous this morning. How's everybody doing? Good. You know, you're talking about remembrance. So of course I have to share mine. So, you know, I think about, um, where I was um, before I came out to what was then Full Gospel Temple. As a single female, um, I attended the Philadelphia Drive Church of God. If any of you are familiar with the Church of God there on Philadelphia Drive across from the old Elder Beermans, do you remember that, anybody? And um, so I went there for years, and that's where I basically learned... um, the foundation to my walk with God. So um, there were some things that had changed there. And um, my boss and his wife, um, they, um, I, I, they were like my spiritual mentors at the time, and they felt to um, go another direction. So I kind of went along with them. And my boss's wife, she collected Hummels. And so um, the Miller's uh, Hallmark store, to the the Hummels, and so she was driving by the church building, and as she was driving to go to the Hallmark store, the Lord told her that this was the church that they were supposed to go to, so um, we all started coming here, and um, 
I can remember it was a little different than what I was used to. And um, I kind of wondered what on earth, what were you doing here? God, what is your plan? This is really different. And um, and so, but, not, but I, always, I always knew in my heart, this is so funny. I don't know, I'm thinking about this, but it's so funny. I knew that I would marry somebody that was probably going to be a preacher and that he went to Ramah. Right. So, hallelujah. I knew that. So, here we come and I'm I'm in this sanctuary and it was a little it was a little different for me. And um so I see this fella, uh, he was leading the the whatever he did up here, the preliminaries. And you know, I was kind of like I like sports and stuff. I, you guys remember this part and and I saw him and I thought, yeah, he looks a little klutzy. <laughs> and um <laughs> I doubt he likes sports at all. And um, so I think there was one other thing, but I, and yet you were a slob. Yeah. (laughs) So sometimes we don't always, don't always hear from God when we think we are, right? So yeah, I found out that he's a very avid sports fan. I didn't know if y'all knew that. So I thought I'd share that with you that he's a very avid sports fan. And at the time, he has changed since, but that he would fold his dirty clothes to put them into the laundry basket. So being neat and... Oh, and then he he cleaned his house with um, pine saw. So I mean, like top to bottom, spick and span. So the guy's more organized, more clean, more athletic than me. (laughs) But at the time, I didn't know that. So, but anyways, you know, so fast forward... 24 years, here we are, right? So praise the Lord for that. But I can remember there was that that time, and and I share this, this is what I've seen over the years too, is, you know, I know that the Lord had led me to come to this church. Um, And I can't remember, I I can't put my finger on the amount of time that it was this way, um, but where I kind of was still missing home. Does that make sense? Missing my home church. Because that's where that's where I cut my teeth. That's where I started walking. That's where I learned how to walk with God. And so, but I realized that it was really in God's plan for me to be here. And there was one night that we had, uh, Dr. Rothwell, Miss Mary, you remember we had like a 24 hour prayer night. And, um, for whatever reason, we were, we were like the lone rangers, us four, I think, if I remember, I could be wrong with that. But God did something in my heart that night that I knew that this was where I was supposed to be. So, you know, I say that because over the years then I've seen different people come that, that, that this is where they're supposed to be, but it doesn't mean that it's always comfortable at first because it's different. And, but that doesn't mean that God isn't at work in you to bring you to that next level, um, to mold you and to help you to, to get to that next place. It wasn't anything against any of the people. They were wonderful here. But I just, I just had a hard time because I liked the comfort zone of where I was until I realized that this is the next step that God had for me. And if I didn't fulfill that, then I wouldn't be able... <laughs> the rest of my life may not have come together, right? So um, I want to encourage you with that. that I, I mean, most of you are long timers here. I don't mean that. But even if, um, as we see, you know, I look back. <laughs> I see Chris, or I see Cheryl. I don't see Chris, but in Hallie, you know, and even in the remembrance and things, they came here. And Hallie, and those seizures, <laughs> now Jesus brought you through them. <laughs> And she's a beautiful young lady that sits here and how God healed her and how those times were challenging, but they made it through. And I've said this before, but I remember like we would watch Luke, I'll call him Luke up here. He's Lukey to me, but I'm going to call him Luke up here. And you know, there was one particular time that she was having a seizure and they called and they had to drop off Luke and they just lived right down the street. And I remember they dropped him off, and then I think Pastor went out to pray. I, you, I, don't, I don't think you went. You took him to the hospital. But through that time, I can remember Cheryl. She kept her fix. It wasn't easy, but she kept her faith fixed. And I thank God for that, you know? And I could go through a lot of you <laughs> and how God has brought you through. 
life isn't always easy, but I see it's victory is the sweet thing, you know, but that we just have to hold on when things are a little tough. So this, it was actually yesterday. I'm minding my own business. Actually, I got up early and I was like, yay, <laughs> didn't have to work. Hallelujah. <laughs> Taxis, you're all, you're all taxes done? Okay, tomorrow's the due date in case you need an extension. Okay, ours are done now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, I, I was like, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm just going to spend some time with Jesus. And I was walking down the steps. I heard these words. He says, um, who are you when the pressure comes? When the squeeze is on, who are you? What comes out of you? So, you know, I'm sharing this not so much like I'm challenging you, but I guess I'm sharing it more from me because I just, I heard that from my heart and I'm like, okay, Lord, who am I when the pressure's on and the squeeze is on? And, and I can tell you over the last probably month, especially it gets intense. It gets busy. There's longer hours, um, more demands. Um, you know, sometimes it just seems like through those times, um, I'll just kind of share my story part of it because like pastor says I don't know everybody's story but I do know mine and that sense is that you know it just seems like okay I'm a little more tired a little more quick to get frustrated with some of the things that come up right and then we've had a few I'll call hiccups with vehicles <laughs> and so um, that causes for um, extra finances ever been there um, and then you know we it's not everybody gets refunds on their taxes. Some people have to pay. And so, you know, that's always an unknown. Not really. I kind of knew, but you know, it's, there's just things, right? Life. Sometimes the washer and dryer goes out or sometimes the, the, you know, you just have situations that call for extra demands that aren't always in our schedule. They're not always planned, and they can add some pressure to us. And so I was thinking about this. Miss Janine's in here. Good. So first of all, before I get to that, because it's an 80s thing, Miss Janine likes the 80s. That's what I know. So I, they left that up there, but the vice, do you have a picture of the vice ready? The, yeah. You all know what that is? A vice. <laughs> So my, my memory of that is on my dad's workbench, of which when I was a little kid, all I remember is turning the thing on the end to see how far out I could get it, and then turning it back in to see how far I'd go. I didn't really realize it had purpose besides just for me to play with it, right? So, but it can get pretty tight and really squeeze things in there, right? It's to hold things and that kind of thing. Um, but I, I think about that when I think about a vice and squeezing, you know, because it's when you're squeezed, when the pressure's on, it kind of lets you know what, what comes out of you. So I was thinking about things that, that when I eat, that something comes out of it. And I was remembering back to the 80s, and you have a picture of this, of the freshen up gum. Does any of you guys remember the freshen up gum? <laughs> Look at that. Those were the days, right? So how many remembers that gum? Yeah, did you? And that, that burst of flavor that came out of it, that was, that was pleasant, right? That was a great burst that you, you got when you did that. Um, so, and another one, the, uh, the Lindor picture, I think, is next. Remember, have you guys ever had these when you take a bite into that? Now, of course, I picked caramel because I like caramel, but they have them in like dark chocolate and stuff like that. But the outside has chocolate, but when you take a bite into it, it's got that squishy center, that kind of burst. But those are fun, pleasant kind of squeezes, aren't they? Of course, I have to do this um, for my husband. One more is the <laughs> eclairs. <laughs> But that cream puff burst when you put it in your mouth. Aren't those yummy? So, and I was like, those are the pleasant thing. And, and I can remember years ago, there would be people that we would meet. And some of them were just so sweet, so kind. And, and we just got this thing where we'd say, they just ooze with sweetness. It was just like they just, sweetness pours out of them. And that was always a desire in my heart, is to just 
allow that sweetness to come out of me. And, um, but oozing sweetness, sometimes that happens. Like, well, you've got to have the sweetness on the inside, and it's when you're squeezed. You know, we can all be happy and kind when everything's going good, but what happens when that person gets over in front of you or those two semis drive side by side all the way down Interstate 70? Ever been there? <laughs> Today, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, sometimes there's things, those are like the pleasant things, right? There are certain things that I got to thinking about um, that aren't so pleasant when they're squeezed. But you guys remember as like, well, as some of the kids and stuff, like the slime, you could squeeze that in your hands and it would just like come out and kind of fun, I guess. But it's kind of gross. But here's, here's the one that I was thinking of. I'm still trying to figure this out. I think it came out as a, as a game on your phone first. And it's called Pimple Popper. Ever heard of that? And then there's actually a show. You guys are familiar with the show that's called Dr. Pimple Popper? Do you guys, raise your hand if you're familiar with that. Do you know that people actually psychologically have satisfaction out of watching that show and getting, yeah, see, see what I'm talking about? Y'all need prayed for, that is so disgusting. So Maddie's one of them. She absolutely loves that. And I promise you, no more pictures. I did not put one of those up there. You guys can look that up yourself. (laughs) But that, those things are squeezed and it's unpleasant. I guess the end result is supposed to be good and all that stuff, but nastiness, right? But, but then it kind of goes back to that thing of, I'm asking myself, I want you to ask yourself, who are you when the pressure comes? Who are you when the squeeze is on? What comes out? Anger? Calmness? Patience? Bad words? I hope not. But who are you when the pressure comes? Um, I want you guys to, you got your Bible? I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 5. I could bring up the kids on the move kids and they could sing their, sing their song, The Fruit of the Spirit, and they would know that. Um, while you all are looking at Galatians chapter 5, I just want to do a little bit of a, a side note here. Um, first of all, when I was talking about like 24 years later, actually our anniversary is on the 24th and it's 24 years this year, um, and I'd do it all over. And I'm thankful that God has called me Um, to be faithful, to give me a man to walk with and to have the opportunity to um, stand um, in this position. I love the people of God and you guys are amazing and I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for the opportunity to um, work in the education department. We've got, we just got so many amazing people here and the discipleship teachers, the kids on the move teachers, kids in motion teachers, youth, young adults, adult teachers, so many gifts in this place to teach the word of God at every level. And I'm forever grateful. And, um, you know, the, the groups are growing. Hallelujah. So, you know, pastor talked about this morning about answering the call and obeying God. So, I mean, if you ever feel to help out, you let us know because God's on the move. Amen. So Galatians chapter five, did you find it? Okay. It says in verse 16, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adult, sorry, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you before, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I thought of those like that pimple popper, the nasty stuff that comes out when you're squeezed, right? But look at this in verse 22. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. And when I was thinking about being squeezed, and you know, I kind of left there with the with the unpleasant pimple popping, but I also wanted to go back to the fact that when you think about fruit, fruit that's squeezed, we go um, vacation, and um, when we used to go down to North Carolina and vacation, they had this place, Andy's. I guess they changed it to like 55 or Highway 55 or something like that. But they had this drink called a, like a orange aid. And it was squeezed oranges with sugar. Amazing. What other things do you squeeze, especially come with the fairs and stuff? The lemonade squeeze, right? What about, um, is there a limeade kind of thing? Is there? Is there one of those? What else is good to squeeze and make good juice out of? Grapefruit. What about grapes? Yeah? Apple cider? That's that's right. So, you know, I think it's kind of ironic or so good that those are really good drinks. And the Bible likens it to the fruit of the Spirit. Um, I want you to turn over to Psalm chapter 1. I just have a couple other scriptures. Psalm 1, and we're going to start right there at verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. You know, pastor's been talking about the path that we're on. And I hope you guys are making good choices for your paths. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Look at verse three here. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Is that what your testimony wants to be? Is that the desire of your heart? That we're planted by the rivers of water and that we bring forth fruit. We all know that we can't just produce fruit in and of ourselves. He's the vine, right? We are the branches and we have to be connected to the vine and to the life source for that fruit to develop and to grow. You know, there's a song and and it's scriptural, but it says, search me, O God. You know, it's like, see if there's any wicked way in me. And I, I want to be pure before you, Jesus. So search me, O God. And the Bible says that the word of God um, is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And, and when you read that scripture, it says it's, the, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And I thought about that. It's a discerner. The word of God will help us divide thoughts and intents. So it'll help us check ourselves to see, are we really, do we have the right heart with this? Do we have the right attitude with this? Um, Do we have, are we dealing where we're allowing bitterness to come in or unforgiveness to slip in? Um, But the word of God, and it's a mirror, it'll help us to check ourselves to really evaluate. But I want to encourage you, allow yourself the opportunity, like I am am, and will continue to do, um, because I promise you I haven't perfected it. And, you know, um, it, it, I'm, this guy, he practices what he preaches, okay? So we have been going through a little bit of a challenge with Josh's truck. So we're still waiting on it. He's, he, it's been in the shop for over a year. And there's been opportunities for the flesh to rise up and thoughts of telling this person how I really feel. And every time we get a little frustrated or Josh gets frustrated, here's pastor, daddy, hubby, helping us all to get our focus back on staying, staying the course and it's, it's important. And then this, this week, I can remember, and God, God was good. And um, we were just talking about different things, like just financial. I'll just do that. It is a good example. But um, there was just this and that and this and that. And how many knows, like, if, 
if you're a bean counter at work, you're a bean counter at home. So I'm checking all that going on. And then I was like, wait, but God's our provider and I'm not going to go away from that, that confession. But that's what I'm talking about. When the pressure's on, what starts coming out? And I remember we were having a little family meeting. And, um, you know, sometimes it's difficult when you're in a challenging situation. Your mouth just kind of wants to just, just like fly off. Can I say it like that? Like you just want to, you just want to just share your aggravation because it'll make you feel better, right? And so anyways, but pastor was saying, and he was telling the kids too, is that, you know, he's praying and and we are, and we were praying and believing for the favor of God to surround us. And we're believing that God is making ways for us. So what we cannot do is, is allow our words to stop that process. Okay. And so there are times that, you know, we can, we can say, oh, the favor of the Lord's upon us. And then as soon as we get hit, bam, bam, then we're like, oh, this is, I can only go one four, step forward and three steps back. I can't win for losing. And we just start letting all that spouty stuff. We can never get ahead. As soon as we try to get ahead, something else happens and we can never get ahead. You know what? That's where you have to clamp it. And stay with what the word of God says, because that's when the pressure's coming and that is what, what's in you is going to come out of you. And that's where you have to keep the course. And none of us are perfect at this. Thank God that he forgives us. We can repent, repent and get back on course. Come on up, honey. I'm done pretty much. So unless you have a question for me and I'll answer it. That's true. Yeah. It is so true. Uh, if you want a checklist in your Bible, I took, you know, I usually do a first of the year checklist. If you want a checklist in your Bible, uh, I don't have it checked out on this one, but other ones. Get you a checklist of 1 Corinthians 13. Now, even myself, in this situation when it comes to this thing with Josh's vehicle, uh, I was very... Uh, and I told someone and said, well, I wouldn't have went back and done that because you had the right. I got very, one day I had enough and I said it. Then I drove over to his place to meet with him. And I said, uh, before, I, before I go any further in this, uh, this is what brought us here. But uh, how I approach this, I apologize. And that's what wasn't easy to do up front in life, but then it gets easier the more you do it. But the whole point is, it's a, it's a line that you cross. Where do I quit from being weak and knowing that's meek and give God the opportunity to fight the battle? But then, what do you do on some other stuff as well? So, you know, don't, don't ever get to the place to where you can't, where you allow your flesh to override the word. If you're going to err, err on the side of this. Err on the side of this. If that's if you're going to err, err on the side of this. I'd rather err on the side of coming off weak and giving God the opportunity to fight my battle and restore than I ever would trying to take it in my own hand and losing. All right? I, I, I'm, my, I'm not that good of a fighter to fight all my own battles. You get it? I'm not that good. I was never a scrapper to begin with. I never liked to lose. I've disciplined on the basketball court, as on the football field. I don't like to lose, but I know that uh, without God, we don't make it. But here's the checklist, 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with tongues as men and angels, but have not love, charity, I become a sounding brass and tinkling or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gifts of prophecy, well, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith that I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. Now, I didn't say you wouldn't be. It says you are. It says you're nothing. And though I bestow all of my goods to feed the poor, I give everything away, Lord. Well, it's all right. 
And though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up, does not behave rudely. You know, I, I just, uh, I, I struggle with people that become rude. And uh, love does not, is not rude, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And just the next few words of verse eight, love never fails. That's the road you take. So since... I, I just wanted to um, pray for you before I go down to, but I just, if the Lord gave me that and then he wanted me to share that with you, maybe there's somebody here that's feeling that pressure. And um, I just want to pray for you. So if you just want to bow your head and you'll know if you're the one facing the pressure or not, but I just want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are a good God. And I thank you, Jesus, that even when the pressures squeeze like the vice, that, that when we turn it to tighter and it just seems like it's just squeezing us, but Jesus, you do have a way out. You make a way when there seems to be no way. Jesus, you move in ways that we cannot see, Jesus, and you'll make a way for our situation. And Father, Forgive us if we have allowed our, our mouth to run off and say things that we shouldn't forgive us, Jesus, and we're going to get back on path with it. But Father, I thank you that this congregation is blessed of the Lord. I thank you, Father, that the favor of God is upon them. I thank you for those that are, that are having a financial challenge, Jesus, that you will help them to fix it, give them the wisdom. If it's a physical, no matter what it is, if it's yes, relationship, Lord. Jesus, whatever it is, God, you you are the way maker and you are the helper and you are the one that will restore and bring victory as we speak to the mountain and command it to be removed and not allow defeat to overtake us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, thank you. I didn't know she had a slideshow going there. She came in prepared, man. Came in prepared. Well, praise God. Uh, I'm not going to add anything other than that verse uh, to that. Um, but uh, God is faithful. God is faithful. Uh, yesterday, we're getting ready to go into the, uh, take the youth over to that, down to Top Golf. Uh, we're getting ready to do that. And um, uh, I just said something, Angel, you know, I was given giving to somebody some things that I just really wanted to just, just to show them love. And I told Angel, I said, you know, the reason why it brings so much joy to give things away is because that's the love of God. That's God. For God so loved that he kept everything to himself. No, what is it? He so loved that he gave. I'm telling you, I, I get ecstatic about giving. I, I do. I get... Uh, I just love giving things away. I love buying things for people and uh, sharing things. Uh, I just do. I just do. I, I've said it many times. I remember when, when uh, I was sitting here and Mike would on Sunday, he'd say, "Well, let's. Uh, you going to go home with me? Yeah." And and uh, Mike Rothwell. And so I knew that they'd go out to they'd go out to dinner after service. They'd go out to lunch after service. And I always felt bad like you know dear god they're always paying for my food but if they didn't i couldn't do it anyway you know it's just it's just the fact and i remember saying one time lord uh it won't always be this way you're going to bless me to where i'm not going to sit there and feel like that somebody else has to do it uh you're going to bless me to where i'm going to be the one grabbing this and taking people and that's just that's what it's all about amen god's love gives God's loves gives. So you may not be where you want to be or where you think you should be, but you stay in there. You keep letting the right things come out of you, and God will put you in that very place. All right, let's stand. Come on. 
God loved, love gives, love gives, love gives. Love's not selfish. I've had too many marriage counseling situations with people and, and I've dealt with selfishness. People being selfish. And uh, they want it their way. They want it their way. And, uh, and so, I mean, the woman just honest. He's selfish. And he said, yes, I am. But I love her. I said, no, wait a minute. Love isn't selfish. The true love of God isn't selfish. Love gives. Amen. I'm reminded of the story. This Some of you may have heard it. I'll give you the short version since you're already standing. Uh, you're thinking, getting out early. Glory to God. Short version. Huh? Not if you don't, if I don't keep talking. But this husband and wife, you know, and um, they're getting ready to uh, coming up on a special date. And uh, he couldn't figure out how he, how he could do something special for her. And, and uh, it said the story went on. It was a, not a true story, but it was a story. I don't think it was a true story. It was kind of a, anyway. But anyway, she had just beautiful, long, flowing hair. But they were so poor that he really never had money to buy her the brush that she always wanted. But he had this horse that he had that was her transportation, but he rode it bareback because he didn't have a saddle. So she thought, I'm going to sell my hair to buy him a saddle. But he said, I'm going to sell my horse to buy her that brush. And the day came. She had no, ho- she had no hair. He had no horse. But that love brought them together. Amen. So just whatever you do, love. Love. Couples just love again. Enjoy each other. Enjoy your families. Amen. Enjoy your kids and grandkids. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. The ushers, elders come. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be and such a presence of your goodness, your love. I thank you, Lord, that you're the one who redeemed our life from destruction. Father, when we're squeezed, what comes out is what really exists. I'm asking you, examine our hearts as Angel prayed. We want to please you. We want to be pleasing one another. We want pureness to come out of our mouth. Bitter and sweet don't come out of the same faucet. May it be sweet that comes out. I thank you, Father, for your word. I decree no sickness, no plague, no disaster, no destruction, nor disease comes near us. And Father, I thank you that you give your angels charge to bear us out of dangers, to to deliver us, to snatch us from it. And therefore, we're thankful. And we say with our mouth, because we believe in our heart, angels, take charge. Amen.